Eisenhower fan. This morning, take out your favorite pro, cheer her on. Athletes, arrow her up. You have a full set of pins. How about a great send off for round one of the 2017 U.S. Women's Open? Good luck, ladies.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Plano Super Bowl in Plano, Texas. Just north of Dallas. That is the site for the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. The third major on the 2017 PWBA Tour. Certainly appreciate you being here and joining us here early. A squad qualifying. Round number one, Emil Williams Jr. will be joined throughout the day by many guests. But we'll also have a dynamite team of Matt Cannizzaro, Aaron Smith, to take you through the evening here at the U.S. Women's Open during the week. As well, certainly appreciate everyone's viewership. So I'll get you started here throughout the day. We're going to overlap a little bit in the middle. And then Matthew and Aaron will take you home. Three squads a day, of course. This is A squad. We are in round number one. Fresh. B squad today will bowl on the burn squad, and then we'll have the double burn later this evening. For the C squad, tomorrow it will go B, C, A. And then if you're familiar with three squad and three-day qualifying, you'll know that CAB essentially is the third day, C, A, B. Be sure to check pwba.com slash live, of course, for all of your results, standings, pairings. If you'd like to know who is on what squad, we have all that for you there. It is also located bold.com slash US Women's Open. Also, as always, we encourage you to join in on the conversation. Bye commenting on our Live Now posts, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're behind lanes 23, 24, 25, and 26. We're joined by SBC Hall of Famer and PWA Hall of Famer and the winner of this event, 1992. Tish Johnson, Stephanie Martins, and Natalie Woodward Hall. 25 and 26, Ashlyn Hersberg, Cindy Sutherland, and Karen Marcano. Already potential fireworks here in game number one. See a couple players with the front five and the front six. One front five is no more. There is a front six. That is Ashley Galante. That one's got a hook for Hersberg. Nice spare there from Herzberg. She leaves it. And of course, hey, if you leave it, you got to make it. She's able to do just that. Ashlyn, Wichita State Shocker, just finished up in the program. She has a younger sister who actually attends, uh, if it is still the same, Newman University, of course, which is also in Wichita.
Ashley Galante now with the front seven. We'll keep you updated there. Talk about the pattern here in just one second. A lot of uh, storylines to get to as well throughout the week. A long week. It will take 56 games to make the live televised step ladder finals on CBS Sports Network. That will take place Sunday, August 6th. Sunday, August 6th. Again, on CBS Sports Network, noon Eastern is the time. So. Be in front of your TV screen if you can, set your DVRs, etc. Nothing like live television and live bowling, as many of you certainly well know. So we look forward to that. But again, 56 games. You gotta earn it here, of course, at the U.S. Women's Open. A lot of games, a long format. A lot of players love the U.S. Open, Open just for that purpose. Those sentiments there, the opportunity to Have a, a lot of games under the belt. Essentially, obviously, let the bowling do the talking in that regard. Ashley Galante with the front eight. A live score this week, but I'll save. So working hard on that, potentially see what we can do. So if something changes in that area, I'll be sure to uh, certainly let you know. St. Petersburg Clearwater Open and the nationwide PWA Rochester Open. All right, Galante, two players to our left, front eight and the front nine. So no time wasted, folks. Game one of eight, eight games each round. The cut will be to the top third of the field, the top third of the field after 24 games. Once the field is cut, 
Those players will then bowl another eight games. It'll be qualifying round number four, essentially. Spare in the fifth, working on the strike. Here in Marcano, five out of seven. A shot there from Stephanie Martins. We on a pair here. Should go by relatively quickly, although it is eight games. Zara, Aaron Smith talked about them earlier. They are here. And right on time as Galante in the 10th frame. And the 10 pin. A nice run there for Ashley. Getting off to a great start. That's certainly a way you'd like to start here at the U.S. Women's Open. As many pins as you can get at a time. I don't know, uh, build some confidence and while we have a moment. Talk a little bit about the oil pattern here at the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. 43 feet is the distance. It's the length of the condition. 31 just more than 31 milliliters of oil. So that is the volume of the pattern. Be sure to check the graph out if you'd like to see it. Located on pwba.com slash live. You can also get there via the schedule page, pwba.com, click tournaments, and then schedules. Scroll down to the U.S. Open Dover. Keggle, official lane maintenance provider, of course, provided all of the lane patterns this year. Martins through the nose. She leaves a 3-6. Monte made the spare. On her pair, Laura Plazas and spare to shoot 236. Danielle McEwen open in the ninth. Struck, excuse me, open in the eighth, struck in the ninth, can get to 235. All right, Martins. Oh, there we go. Now we're cooking. Now we are cooking. Galante shoots 276 to start out with. That makes for a pretty good day, or excuse me, could make for a pretty good round. We talked about the, the length and the number of games, so you well know. No gimmies, no guarantees. But 276 will certainly help your cause. Johnson open in the 10th frame. A Hall of Famer out, struggling a little bit here in game number one. Talked to Tish earlier, prior to the squad beginning. 
I always enjoy talking to her because of her personality. Always cracking a joke. Also wanted to uh, make sure we extend our greetings and hellos to Mel B watching back in uh, Colorado Springs. Hello, Mel. Hope you are well. That is Melanie McAllister for those who could be wondering who I'm referring to. They do great stuff down in Colorado Springs. Herzberg with a 3-7 to deal with as Sutherland makes her spare in the ninth frame. Posted a few videos on our social media channels from practice yesterday. So that'll kind of give you an idea of where you may expect to see players playing. It'll be interesting to see how things will go about game five, I would say. Each group had a chance to bowl essentially on the fresh burn and double burn. Theoretically, not enough minutes to really simulate a full eight-game block. So when you get to about game five or so, we could start to see some different things on the lanes. One ninety-three for Ashlyn Herzberg. All right, 226 for Karen Marcano and 170 for Cindy Sutherland. And just like that, game one is in the books, highlighted by the front nine effort of Ashley Galante.
All right, coming up next here, game number two. We'll have Debbie Ayers, Angie Ramirez, and Anita Arnett. They will be on lanes 23 and 24. On 25 and 26, if, uh, if everything is correct that I'm looking at. We'll have Bree McPherson, Sydney Brummett, Danielle Walker, and Summer Jasmine. Again, be sure to look at your pairing sheets. Yeah, available at pwga.com. Of course, this event opened, so several non-members in the field. As you would expect to see, players like Sidney Brummett, for example, Anita Arnett, Thanks to everyone tuning in. Thanks for your viewership early. Early start, and uh, we'll be going essentially all day, just about, with rounds scheduled for, again, 8 a.m., 1.15 p.m., and 6.30 p.m. Those times are all local. 9 a.m. Eastern, 2.15 Eastern, and 7.30 Eastern. Those are your squad times. Thanks to Jeffrey Chen watching, along with Monty Smith checking in. All right, bowling is underway here in our featured pairs. Again, Anita Arnett, Angie ramirez Pereira, and Debbie Ayers on 23 and 24. Bree McPherson. Summer Jasmine. Sydney Brummett and Danielle Walker. Pearson from Australia. I believe has bowled the last four events. Had several players on tour from Australia at one point or another. Nina Buxton and Caitlin Comain were on tour for towards the beginning portion of the event. Bowled some events, uh, at least one event, I believe. Found Valley, then on to the Midwest Swing. 
for returning home. Several players from down under also bowled at the Queens. And Bree McPherson kind of closing the tour out, representing Australia in that regard. This is the final event of the regular season, folks. So there a lot of things kind of on the line, brewing from the PWA Tour standpoint. Spots left, of course, in uh, the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship are essentially on the line. Basically, with every shot, essentially, for several players. It's after those who have won titles or will win titles. The remaining spots will be determined by the PWBA points list. This is a major, of course, so amount of points received are greater than a standard event. And so theoretically third or fourth place the difference in those places for example could end up being the difference in someone advancing on to the tour championship. And we'll have a better understanding of course of how that's going on as we continue throughout the week. Three shows to tape. Also a live show. Obviously with the U.S. Women's Open, so we still have a lot to be determined. Here is Arnett. Nice break there. That went from what could have been the 278 to just the two pin. Single pin spare for the former most valuable player, collegiate player of the year at Wichita State. Our first team All-American. Now a first team nurse and mother and uh, wife. The husband Omar is here. Summer Jasmine throwing pins around this morning. Bucket there for Arnett. McPherson. Nice shot there. Got the footwork under control. Now Debbie Ayers. Maybe from Southern California originally. And a couple of halls of fame. SoCal at San Diego. Shout out to Jessica Lesaganich. Unable to bowl this week because she's got real responsibilities. Had to work. Jess normally competing, of course, on tour. Many of you have seen or heard, saw her name in the standings, saw her bowl on extra frame. Her watching her friend and uh, fellow.
fellow staff rep, Debbie. One of the unique things actually about the tour is uh, the way it is set up currently. There are several players with full-time jobs outside of bowling. There are also a few players who this uh, this is their full-time job. They are a full-time bowler. And so essentially whatever whatever way works for you. If you can still bowl and maintain the job status, obviously a lot of employers are very nice as uh, Angie gets a break there on the eight pin. She's got a double. Allow you the time off. Talk to a lot of players who uh, their their jobs and, and folks certainly understand that bowling is certainly a passion is what they do and they allow them to then do it which that's the best of both worlds of course everyone doesn't have that opportunity but so they certainly bowl when they can I mentioned nurses we've got several nurses several teachers Many in the uh, financial areas. And there's some folks in our, within uh, science, chemistry. Nice nine pin taken out there for Bree McPherson. You're welcome to comment. No chat room on Extra Frame, but the live now post on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Those are essential places to kind of join in on the convo, if you will. As viewers start to go, uh, or should I should say, continue to roll in as the day gets moving. That'll be the place. We'll probably have a few live now posts, one for each round. This week we'll also have a a few different uh, a few different posts to uh, or channels, I should say. PWBA, USBC Social, all going on. So I appreciate you tuning in and joining us wherever you can. This is game two of eight here, A Squad qualifying. My name is Emil Williams Jr. Matt Canizaro, Aaron Smith here with us as well. McPherson now five in a row. Sydney Brummett with the front five. Jasmine back into the strike column here. Ayers, that's got a hook. It does, and just, just wrapped around the 10. The 7 went out a little late as well. I mean, we already had a front 9 earlier today, Sydney Brummett. Looking for the front six. It's in a little bit. It holds. She knew it when she let it go. No front six for Sid the Kid. It's in Anita Arnett, former player of the year at Wichita State. Sydney Brummett, 2016-2017. Collegiate MVP, Player of the Year, first-team All-American is McPherson. 
10 back. Marie, very pleasant to talk with. I've spoken to her on a few occasions. Out here, essentially, you know, by herself, doing the travel. Love on the 10 pin of the run stops at six. We've got some cool things going on this week here at Plano Super Bowl. Big thanks to the center, the proprietor Jamie Brooks, general manager Scott Craddock, and everyone involved here from the staff and crew. Excellent facility. I know they have done some renovations within the last year or so spectacular place I understand that they had new floors carpet things were moved around game room game rooms were here and now they're there and uh, but this is my first time seeing it so I don't have anything to compare it to previously uh, so I'm very happy to walk in with this great image and then we'll leave out with uh, what I'm sure will be a fantastic experience throughout the week here at Plano Super Bowl and just north of Dallas in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area. If you are nearby within driving distance, I encourage you to come on through. Arnett now, her first double of this game too. Got a few things going on with the core as well. Exclusive Bowling Insight. Be sure to join the core. At worst, learn more about it at bull.com slash the core. McPherson continuing. Now with seven in a row after the early open in frame number one. We'll have a core tailgate. Had one at uh, the Go Bowling PWBA Players Championship. As Jasmine there gets a break. That will take place, I believe, Saturday. It will be Saturday afternoon. So I have that opportunity to meet and greet a few players, enjoy some good food, and have some fun. Learn more about the core, an opportunity to win some great prizes. We'll have some giveaways outside as well. Again, it's a full-on tailgate, folks, and uh, this is football. It's football area here, so certainly know how to tailgate in this area, Plano, Texas, downtown Plano. Had a nice meal there on Sunday. I've lived in the area now for just over a year. I've never been to Plano until Sunday. But uh, the downtown area was pretty cool. That's got a hook. It's going to. And Debbie Ayers may have found herself a little area. A little area for Ayers, if you will. Also, the city of Plano and uh, the local businesses, commerce and whatnot, Getting behind the U.S. Women's Open. The Dairy Queen just down the street here, about one block away. On their marquee said, Welcome PWBA Bowlers. Posted that on the PWBA Instagram yesterday, and I thought that was, that's pretty darn cool right there. It's one thing for the bowling center to do it as McPherson continuing to strike there in the ninth. But uh, when the local businesses...
can get on board as well. It certainly makes it all the better. Arnett for three in a row. Bang. All right, Summer has had some single pins here. Seven pin, ten pin. Now a nine pin. Ramirez. One of what I believe, I think that's the number. I see Karen Marcano made a very nice split conversion, perhaps the 247. A few pairs to our right. And the first sign of trouble there for Sidney Brummett. 210 makeable. It is in the ninth frame. to the 10th frame, Arnett. Yeah. Stubborn five pin in the eighth frame on 23 and 24, McPherson. Looking for nine in a row. That's got to push maybe a tad. It does. About 10. Kind of get an idea, folks, of watching Bree, watching Sidney Brummett, watching Angie Ramirez, really everyone on our featured pairs currently. Where the area of the lane to play was. Could it change? It probably will, maybe not too drastic, based on what we looked at via. practice yesterday. Right now, everyone taking a look at Bree McPherson. Off balance there. And the stream comes to an end, but she will certainly be in the 260s. At worst, 265. Jasmine just looking for the right combination at the moment. Had some single pins to deal with here in these last few frames. Very nice game there for McPherson, 267. Similar to Galante, but a nice score up early in the block. Get some confidence going. Nice quality shot there from Arnett.
open in the ninth. Brummett back on it here in the tenth. to end a very nice game for Sidney Brum at 247 for 182 for Summer Jasmine. Tenth frame on twenty three and twenty four. A nice shot from Arnett. It's a nice double as well. Arnett will be with good count in the 230s. One eighty one for Debbie Ayers. Nice break there for Angie. Angie can get to two oh five. One more would get her to the two O's. Or certain here. On 25 and 26, we will welcome Nicole Trudell, Deandra Asbady, Erica McPhail, and Samantha Kelly. All right, trying something on the field. 232. That was a very nice game. They did not start well for Anita trying to get lined up. Seven counts, a six count in there. Clean through those first four for a three bagger. And a five pin really in the eighth frame. Oh, that's a, that's a 250 game. She'll take 232. Mirror shoots 193, again 232 for Arnett, and 181 for Debbie Ayers. 
Well, folks, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll check on something here. I'll be right back with you. Don't go anywhere, folks. You are watching the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. Defending champion is Liz Johnson. Oh, she's won five of those trophies and uh, green jackets and the last three in a row. Not bowling. This squad, Liz Johnson, is on B squad. So the defending champion will see her in a few hours. But right now, we'll have game three again coming up. Erica McPhail, Samantha Kelly, Deandra Asbady, and Nicole Trudell. On 23 and 24. Nina Flack, Yenny Wegner, and Missy Park. Back with you in a moment. You're watching the 2017 U.S. Women's Open live on Extra Frame. All right, we are underway. Game three, off and running. All right, get a chance to see some good players here from Sweden. We've seen uh, Nina Flack actually spoiled a couple of events this season. I don't believe 
I recall if you get a Wagner involved, the Queens this year. I know she bowled last year, but I'm sure she didn't bowl this year. This could be her first event of the season on tour. And, of course, it could be her first and only, or she could have one more. You never know. She could win this event. And move on to the Smithfield Tour Championship, for example. Won the World Cup in 2016. Actually defeated uh, Team USA's Danielle McEwen, two-time PWA titleist. the third Swedish woman to win the World Cup. Well, she can play, folks, if this is the first time you're getting a chance to see her. Powerful game. Watched her in practice and Based on her look, thought she would probably have some success. Throw in the fact that she's a really, really good player. She will have a very good week here in Plano. Flack, again, also from Sweden. Several players making the trip from Sweden this week. Andre Andersen in included in that. Runner up last year, the 2016 USBC Queens. A shot there from Samantha Kelly. Game three of eight. A squad. B squad will start at about 2.15 Eastern time. That is what our scheduled time is. C squad will begin approximately at 7.30 Eastern time. Black and Sweden, both going to spare three-bagger here to start. Nicole Trudell, our Sacred Heart University collegiate player. Extremely talented. Missy Parkin. See, expecting husband Drew. They now know what uh, the gender will be. It's going to be a baby boy. Due in December. And Missy now has three in a row. Looking for her first TV appearance, championship round appearance of the season. Could happen here at the U.S. Women's Open. So close. Uh, well, it wasn't last week, but uh, it certainly felt like last week, about two weeks ago at this point, in uh, Rochester. Ended up fifth in the event, tied for fifth. Deandra Asbady made her return to television this year at the PWBA Greater Detroit Open. Finished third. 
Anthony losing to the eventual champion, Daria Payo. Andrew's feeling better this season, physically, from a physical game standpoint. Mentally, still certainly believes she can win and will win. Made some adjustments in her game in regards to bowling ball weight, going from 15 to 14 pounds at uh, the hest of good friend Jason Belmonte. And it certainly has made a difference. Speed rev rate she felt wasn't matching up. And now she feels like she's where she needs to be. That one was right there for Wagner, and she just snaps off the 7-10. So identical scores for the Swedish teammates, Flack and Wegner. Kelly, and no love on the 7 pin. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. Hello to Michael. Michael Savage. For watching. Open frame there for Kelly. And after five in a row, flat down through the nose. Who else is joining us this morning? Hello to Noel Shuck. Checking in from Athens, Georgia. If you are ever at a live PWBA event, I'm not talking about live television, essentially just a standard event like this week if you were here in Plano. Although Noel is not here currently, at least I don't think she is. But you may run into Noel and my guy Jay, two good fans, in fact, two great fans. First saw them last year at the uh, Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship. And I believe they were at uh, at least two, and I want to say three events this season. Saw them in St. Pete. I think they were at the Queens and maybe somewhere else. Robert Wade watching uh, and wishing Missy Parkin some great success this week. Hello to my man Troy Fisher watching from SoCal. Well, Troy gets a chance to watch Missy here in game three as Wegner continues to strike. Guinea Wegner. Back-to-back -back open frames there for Kelly. Here comes Nicole Trudell looking for three in a row. Failed looking for her first strike when she returns to the lanes. Flack, high flush. Michael, it's a good question in regards to, uh, you notice that the prize fund is 20K this week. 20K is uh, major event payouts. Standard event. First place, 10K, 10,000, majors, 20,000.
trouble for Trudell. Two-way 10 attempt for Parkin. Players bowling on this squad. Of course, we know who's on our featured pair. Those of you who may be wondering, just kind of go down the list here on who's bowling in A squad. Adele Warner, Warner, Camille Psychos, Elise Bolton, Jen Higgins, Megan Kelly, Megan Simon on this pair. Megan Simon, local from Dallas. Saw Debbie Ayers, Anita Arnett, and Angie Ramirez, Bree McPherson, Sydney Brummett, Danielle Walker, Summer Jasmine. Saw them already this uh, this morning. Talked about Ashley Galante starting with the front nine in game one, if you're just joining us. She went on to shoot 276. She's crossing with Danielle McEwen and Laura Plazas. Stephanie Martins, Natalie Woodward Hall, and Tish Johnson. Ashlyn Herzberg, Cindy Sutherland, and Karen Marcano. Kaiser Wagner, so from Sweden. Danny Sellers and Selena Broderick. Sellers is a uh, local from Arlington, Texas. Julia Bond, Team USA member, and uh, Nebraska standout bowling this week, along with Ann Sperling and Grace Hall. Christina Zerbinski. She'll be bowling no matter what on August 6th, this Sunday. She is in the finals of the nationwide PWA Rochester Open. She is bowling with Kaylin Carl and Gloria Wood. And of course, Nina Fleck, Annie Wegner, and Missy Parkin. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Big thanks to Nationwide. Nationwide was out and about last night at uh, our Pro-Am here at Plano Super Bowl. Fantastic job by the hosts and the PWA fans who came out to support and participate. Heck of a turnout. It was jam-packed in here, folks. 48 lanes of Pro-Am fun. Trip four. Or any. The string ended in the eighth frame. See Parkin uh, take care of this 10 pin while McPhail trying to get all 10 down. Hold early. Nice spare. Gonna need those. Slashes are important in the game. Kelly looking to bounce back. Already one strike in the fifth. That one's got to hurry. It does. It's a big double there for Samantha Kelly. Now Flack. That ball right around eight at the arrows. She is well into the 260s. All 
and as Brady is going nine spare strike, nine spare, eight spare, nine spare. She'll be up soon looking for her first double. Parkin, a double in the tenth, trip four, and she gets it. All right, scores are up, folks, after a couple games. Nice shot there. You see the ball just drive hard into the 1 3 10 back. Ashley Galante in the lead after two games. And A squad just underway. 2017 U.S. Women's Open. Galante at plus 100. 500 after two games. Two sixty nine for Nina Flack. We'll move her up the leaderboard. In second right now, Sydney Brummett, two fifty two, two forty seven. Reed McPherson moved into third in a tie for third with Laura Plazas at plus eighty. Danielle McEwen in fourth at plus seventy nine. Or excuse me, in fifth at plus seventy nine. First double there for As Beatty. Megan Kelly is seventh at plus fifty two. Yanni Wegner looking to move up the leaderboard as well. And five through the nose there for Parkin on the fill. Wagner currently in eighth at plus 49. Karen Marcano is ninth at plus 46. Danielle Walker is in tenth. Danielle, local product from Keller, Texas. I believe she went to Alabama State. See there on the right side of your screen in the corner. Oh, that is not a fan. Looking to make a name for himself there. There's a great crew member and staff here at Plano Super Bowl taking care of some dead wood for the players. Shot there, Wagner. Got that one a little right early. She did a few frames to go on that lane and was able to snap the 7 10 out. That one had the makings of something similar, but uh, had a little more this time on the end of the pattern. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing how the lanes will really transition here as we get later into the block. Similar to the final, or excuse me, the previous shot. And now with an opportunity to tie our Swedish teammates. The Flack at 269. Parkin shoots 196. McPhail. Spare looking for her first strike here. Trudell, nice double. That's a better shot. And 268. So nicely done for Team Sweden. Now on to Samantha Kelly here. Sam trying to put a string together. Had the double, then nine spare in the seventh. Back on it here in the eighth. As Beatty looking for three in a row. On the right lane. High flush. Want to thank all of our sponsors on the PWBA Tour. Cubica AMF. Smithfield. Mentioned Nationwide. 
out and about yesterday during the Pro-Am. Had some giveaways, giving away a nationwide visible. A shot from Trudell. Folks, you can see the talent. I mean, extremely talented there. Nationwide will be back in the building this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Again, giving away uh, Visiballs, get a chance to win. Obviously, learn more about Nationwide Insurance as a whole. And some other cool giveaways. Big thanks to Pepsi and GoBowling.com. As Beatty, help 4-7 go down. All right, McPhail still working here. Well, working hard. See if Kelly can put the double together here, set herself up for the tenth frame. Six pin just kind of chills out in the channel. Big fail. Tenth frame. That's got a chance. A nice shot. First strike of the game for Erica. Trudell, PWA member, Sacred Heart, three-time first team, uh, excuse me, three-time All-American, the National Ten Pin Coaches Association. I mentioned talented on the on the lanes, but uh, off the lanes as well. I'll tell you more about that in a second. That their ten pin. Graduated again from Sacred Heart with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science and Information Technology in 2014. Went back to school. Four pin there for McPhail. And got a Master's of Science in Cyber Security. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't want to become a broadcaster very early on, in my uh, teenage years. Actually, I didn't want to be a broadcaster. That's a different story. Trudell, bang. I wanted to be behind the scenes, running some cameras, maybe be a producer. But uh, I'll get more to that about myself a little later. But talk about cybersecurity. Is there any field you can think of right now in 2017 that wouldn't be more beneficial to be a part of than cybersecurity. So there's a young lady who only has it on the lanes. She's got it off the lanes. Very smart with uh, her career choices. So we're looking for more from Nicole, of course, on tour and uh, professionally as well off the lanes. Nice shot there and a nice game for Nicole. Game three, almost in the books here. 219 for Nicole. Samantha Kelly. She couldn't get past a double this game. That spare will give her 186. Here is Asbady on four in a row. Can get to 247. First one in the tenth. Oh, a late touch on the ten pin. And went to the side wall. Gave it a, a love tap there. Was the kind of breaks you need to get to <coughs> finals of the U.S. Women's Open. Long way to go, folks. 56 games, again, is what five players who make the live televised finals. That's what they'll be bowling. 
Really, the 24 players who make match play will all bowl 56 games, but only five can move on. Trouble there. Someone flirted with the channel. Excuse me. Two thirty-three for Asbany. We are on to game number four. Almost ready to turn the corner on this block and uh, get an idea of what the lanes will produce from games five on. That's what I'm looking forward to. Coming up next in game number four, we'll have Kaisa Wegner. Selena Roderick and Danny Sellers on 23 and 24. Julia Bond and Sperling and Grace Hall will join us on 25 and 26. All right, good opening shot there from Wegner, also representing Sweden. Going to the pair where her teammate shot 269 and 268 respectively. Spare taken care of. Most recent European bowling tour rankings. As uh, Yinni and Kaiser Wegner in the top six. Some familiar names as well Daphne Tan, Sherry Tan, and Jazz Real Tan. Friends and competitors from Singapore. Top six again, those are point rankings for the European bowling tour. Give you an idea of what Sweden does, of course, when they are competing. All right, Julia Bond starts with a strike. You'll see Wegner, and she has not uh, strayed away from what I saw her do a little bit in practice. left to right then just about everyone else all 
right, Daniel Walker. Two for two for Julia Bond. Walker now with a washout. Nice recovery frame, though, or second shot, I should say, in the first. Opening gutter, but took care of it. Nice spare. We'll have we'll see if we have standings uploaded to game three. Not as of yet, so we'll keep you posted there. Let's refresh on the old social media as Ann Sperling had started with a double as well. Again, this is game four. Game four of eight, round one. Hello, John. John, a constant and consistent viewer from Oak Lawn, Illinois. And Chicago. And a fast date there for Daniel Walker. Let's take a look at the uh, PWBA points list. Let's scroll all the way down. And uh, again, this is the final event of the season. Regular season event, I should say. Of course, postseason event, Smithfield Tour Championship. 16 bowlers only. So for many, this will be it. Some are trying to give it all they have here. Can someone make a, a dream become a reality? And uh, going to do the unthinkable. Not on the radar, if you will. Come out and win this event, all of a sudden find themselves in the Tour Championship. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Present some cool intrigue. If you were a person who... Is relatively familiar with the sport of bowling, women's bowling. You would uh, be okay with saying that you might expect Liz Johnson and or Kelly Kulik, for example to be in the finals. After all, I believe Kelly has not made the show just twice when she's been entered into the event. She finished fifth. We'll, we'll go from last year on down. Kulik finished fifth last year, fifth in 2015. Was no event in 2014. Runner-up to Liz Johnson in 2013. Won it in 2012. Runner-up to Leanne Holsenberg.
uh, excuse me, runner-up to Leanne in 2011. That was uh, not too far away at AT&T Stadium. Then it was still Cowboy Stadium. Phenomenal shots being thrown here so far by Julia Bond here on Extra Frame. Won it in 2010, did Kelly. Did not make the show in 09, 08. And I don't remember if she was entered in 07. Won it in 2003. So she's won the event three times. Finished fifth in 2001. And runner-up to our director of operations, Neil Milligan, in 2000. So that's Kelly Kulik for you. And, of course, Liz Johnson has won six, or excuse me, five in her career, and she's won the last three. So together, six titles between them, or excuse me, eight. The last time they weren't on a show together at the U.S. Women's Open was 2012. That's Liz Johnson. Missed the, uh, the top five there. But they were on the show in 2011. They were on the show in 2010. So pretty incredible when you think about what those two players have done at this event. And uh, I don't doubt that uh, at some that will continue one way or another first open frame for Sperling in the fourth Julia Bond up now looking for five in a row all right updated standings after three games Ashley Galante continues to lead the charge here, plus 124. Annie Wegner now into second at plus 117. Bree McPherson is third at plus 105. Julia Bond for five in a row. Yes. Laura Plazas is in fifth at plus 92. I may have skipped over Deandra Asbady in fourth at plus 94. Danielle McEwen is sixth at plus 83. Seventh, Anita Arnett. At plus 82, Sydney Brummett is 8th at plus 77. Megan Kelly is 9th at plus 73. Nina Flack is 10th at plus 48. It was a big game for Flack there. We shot 269 in game three. Again, on our featured pairs after a 164 effort in game number two. All right, Julia Bond. Well, a tad right and a 210. 
Selena Roderick. And she leaves a nine pin there. Nice shot there for Roderick. Staff here saw that the, the names weren't correct on a scoreboards here. But getting those changed. All right, no count there for Bond. She'll try to shake that off. All right, Kaisa back on it here. And just like her team Sweden teammates, wow. That's a really good break. Because that, that could have been certainly a design through the nose. But very similar to her Swedish teammates who are on this very pair. Went to spare and five back. Both Flack and Yeni Wagner had the same amount identical scores to a certain extent as well, but at least that spare five backer. Both, of course, went on to shoot 268, 269. Shot there from Walker. First double for her. Danielle continues to be clean, so good spare shooting. for Wegner. Again, this is eight squad qualified. Top third of the field will be uh, is the cut after 24 games. I believe that number gets down to 38. Those 38 players would then uh, receive some prize money. 24 of those after an additional eight games will move on to Round robin match play. Last year, as we see Broderick there with a strike. Last year, Shannon Puhowski qualified 24th and worked her way on up the uh, ladder to earn the number one seed for television. Eventually, falling to Les Johnson in the championship match. Dan Sperling. Had a very, very nice tournament at uh, this year's USBC Senior Queens. Finishing tied for seventh with Shar Hamill. Down on, uh, looks like the low end here. Jen Higgins.
frame there for Sperling. Two off the eight pin. Wagner struck again in the eighth, back on the right lane here in the ninth. Seven pin nearly stood yet again. You see, she is uh, unlike most we've seen so far here. Her angles are not straight through the fronts here, the front part of this, this bad in the fronts of the lane. But again, as I mentioned, she is playing them about the same as she did yesterday in practice. So unsure, but I'd have to think that any probably likes to go a little left to right based on what I see from uh, from her bowling ball, rev rate, etc. So so far, I'm sure some have had to kind of change the way they do things a little bit, at least early. And that's part of it. you got to be versatile to be able to win here. I think this week, you're going to have to know how to be able to go from, uh, play right of 15 at some point of your day. Pretty good shot there. Nice shot there, Broderick. Nicely done there from Selena from Wallingford, Connecticut. Looking forward to going to Connecticut next year. It's on our schedule. East Hartford Open and East Hartford, Connecticut. Egner, 10th frame. Grab, grab the 10 pin. Frame and the tenth for Wagner. That would hurt a little bit. Two thirty-six. Missy Parkin, two thirteen. A few pairs to our right. Sperling, two four five. Nina Flack, two fifteen. She opened in the tenth as well. Bond back on it in the ninth. Well, again, we'll look at our scores here. Plus 124 in the lead. That is Ashley Galante. Yanni Wegner. In second at plus 117, Bree McPherson. In third at plus 105, Deandra Asbady fourth at plus 94, Laura Plaza's fifth at plus 92. Nice game there from Danielle Walker. Lone open in the eighth. 188. Grace Hall. Much needed double. And Broderick. This is the 10 pin there in the 10th, 172. 236, Wagner. 172, Broderick. 188 for Walker. And I believe quietly on the low end. I'm not sure. But Jen Higgins 
may have their front 11. Aaron Smith is on the case. It could be the first perfect game of the tournament. Well, I believe that's it. In Higgins has gone plus 100 in game number four. Plus 100. Game four, congratulations to Jen Higgins. She's going to get herself a PWA 300 ring. Two thirty-three for Julia Bond. Nice game for JB. We're watching Julia Bond work her way up as a youth player still in high school, putting in a lot of hard work and practice. So we frequented a, a similar or the same bowling center where we uh, got our equipment and uh, personal coaching from. And she is now a not only Junior Team USA member, but a Team USA member and doing a lot, a lot of great work. One forty eight for Grace Hall and Sperling. The nine pin to deal with here. All right, 176 for Ann Sperling. And that'll do it for game number four. So headed to the back half of this block. We'll look to see what the lanes develop into for the rest of the day. At least for, obviously, B-Squad, who is coming up next. 
I know some players are probably tuned in. Thank you for watching early in the morning as you get some breakfast and prepare yourselves for competition. Both B and C squads. Of course, remember, if you get here early and you have a few games to spare, we'd be happy to have you right here next to me and the extra frame booth as the players, or excuse me, the viewers would certainly enjoy that as well. I know they're watching, and so that's the best way to get that message out there. Obviously, I'll see them when they get here, but coming up next, folks, game number five, we will have... Uh, excuse me, Bree McPherson, Sidney Brummett, Danielle Walker, and Summer Jasmine. And then we'll have uh, Ashley Galante, Daniel McEwen, and Laura Plaza. So if Ashley is still our tournament leader at this point, well, either way, we're going to find out. Again, congrats to Jen Higgins, who has shot the first 300 of the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. Happened on lanes 9 and 10. Back in a moment, you're watching... U.S. Women's Open, you're watching it live, Bowl TV, on Extra Frame.
All right, folks, welcome back to 2017 U.S. Women's Open. Bowl TV on Extra Frame. This is game five of A Squad. Our feature pair is 23-24, along with 25 and 26. First special guest of uh, the week, not only of the day, but of the week. We'll have plenty for you here. None other than Katie Sutphin. Hey, Emil, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? Good. Thanks for joining me. Of course, anytime. Appreciate it. Katie has uh, been on tour. Has it been? Did you start when the relaunch happened? Yep, it's been three years now. What's had? What's uh, what's been the some of the keys for you? Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, your season. Got it together in, in Florida. Had some great showings. Very close to uh, a TV show. So when you look back from when you started until now, uh, where have you seen kind of the growth for yourself? Um, personally, and I think for a lot of the girls uh, around my age, when we uh, we bowled in college, and it was a great experience, but there was nothing afterwards. Um, there was no other step other than going and trying to bowl with the guys, and uh, that's definitely definitely a whole different world. Uh, I took a couple years off. And when they relaunched the tour, I was very excited. And as far as the first year till now, um, it's grown and it's changed. And it's amazing to see how many, how many new faces all around the country. And it's great. Um, personally, this season's been a little rough, but we all have our ups and downs working on our games. So hopefully a good showing this week and take the momentum into the off season and keep working. All right, so U.S. Women's Open. Obviously, no slouch there. You've seen the pattern. You had a chance to practice on it. In your opinion, first start with yourself. How how do you expect to uh, kind of play the lanes? What's your game plan? Uh, new rules, of course, in effect for for the event, and a good time to talk about that. One in regards to how many balls you can have. Uh, so you can only have eight bowling balls this year at the U.S. Women's Open. Uh, so when you looked at the pattern, you bowled on it, you know, what are you looking to do on the lanes? And then kind of how did the uh, how did that help you or hinder you in regards to what bowling balls you, you select? Well, the, the new rule is really interesting, only having eight. Um, a lot of the girls out here, we travel with a lot of bowling balls. So it was really hard yeah, trying yeah. to limit it, <laughs> honestly. Uh, personally, uh, in practice session, I tried to look for... Uh, balls that that rolled well on the surface um, since we have eight and we do have access to surface changes in between squats anything that that was reading these lane beds and going through the pins the right way um, I tried to keep notes and keep for my arsenal uh, mine's really a mixed bag uh, I've been throwing a lot of the jackal ghost this summer and I've got a couple of them, and they rolled well on, on a lot of the patterns. And for fresh, uh, that and a phase two are probably going to be be in my bag. But we're not a uh, we're not bowling until we're not bowling on fresh until the third day. So we'll see. And uh, based on what I'm seeing today, it was probably a good decision. <laughs> Watching, uh, especially this pair on 25 and 26. Ashley, Danielle, and Laura. Uh, they're I think Laura was throwing a phase two earlier. And a couple of the other phase twos that have been rolling down the lane look pretty good. Uh, as far as the rest of my arsenal, <laughs> the, <laughs> the U.S. Open is notorious for uh, the burn squads being pretty brutal. And this year we've got burn and double burn. So we are bowling 24 games on a pattern. And... I tried to stick with stuff that's not going to force me too far left and still still go through the pins the right way. Hopefully. Uh, I won't have to do what we did last year, which was get in front of the ball return. And the way the pattern's playing, it doesn't 
doesn't look like we're going to have to, but you never know. That's true. I was going to say, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't look like it, but one of the things I was looking forward to from the pattern uh, was to see how things kind of develop uh, from game five, of course, to the end of the block, and then obviously no re-oil. So then we'll really kind of find out, you know, what potentially could happen uh, in regards to uh, the rest of the qualifying the next couple days and, you know, how players may need to adjust if necessary. So you just don't know. Is Ashley Galante continuing to bowl well? She's been off to a great start. Started with the front nine this morning. Uh, and has been off to the races ever since, and she is the leader currently here on uh, A Squad. You are from Florida, uh, Mount Dora, correct? Orlando. It's not right online. Okay. So technically I'm not wrong. No. It, for some reason it didn't update. Where is Mount Dora? Mount Dora Just curious. It's okay. about 45 minutes north okay. of Orlando. So Orlando. Um, but... Ashley in that general area. Yeah, she's in uh, the Central Florida area. She's near Tampa. So um, yeah, we've known each other a very long time. And she's been doing it great this summer and uh, for the past couple years. She's always thrown it really well, but she's been working really hard on her game, um, working with Coach Randy down at Kegel. And uh, you can really tell she's thrown it really, really well today. We've talked about uh, in your own game, uh, some of the things you kind of went back to the drawing board a little bit as well working on uh, what were some of the things that that were uh, bothering you and kind of let you know hey I need to work on this and uh, went home got to work came back out and, and started to have a little success yeah I, I we went we went back to the beginning um <laughs> To the beginning, beginning, like back to basics, beginning. Uh, well, I went back to my notes from uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I worked with John Gaines um, down in Orlando, and you know, I called him up. I said, "John, help. <laughs> Ball roll's not looking right. Uh, timing feels a little bit off." So we uh, we went back to the notes in the video, and we s we saw a couple things that were a little off. And it, it's funny at this level, you feel. When something's off, you feel like it's a train wreck. But when you catch it on video, <laughs> it's not that far off. Not as bad as it feels. It, yes, not as bad as it feels. So uh, for me, uh, my hand was getting trapped. I was too far underneath and inside the ball. Um, I wasn't giving myself a good leverage point to get the ball out and get around it. Uh, so we worked on, on that. And and pretty much just keeping my shoulders over my knees. I was getting a little too far forward, and that was not helping. So once we fixed that, uh, the ball roll got better, um, and then my confidence got better. You know, it's hard when you feel like you're throwing good shots and your ball's just not, not reading the lane the right way and not doing what you want it to do, and then you, you start trying to force it, and uh, that's not good, especially out here uh, and how hard the shots have been this summer. We started out really challenging in California so it was really easy to get into some bad habits yes the uh, season opened with uh, what was essentially 40 feet you know flat one to one so level of difficulty opened and started well and then it's been certainly a, a mixed uh, mixed bag as Galante trips to four we've had some some tougher conditions there have been some uh, we we'll certainly won't say they're easy by any means, but certainly different than some of the other more difficult patterns that uh, have been out uh, this season. So it's certainly, I'd imagine, kept you on your toes and everyone else <laughs> for that matter. Yeah, it, it coming out, uh, you know, 40 feet flat, that was, uh, that was a shock to the system. <laughs> It was, uh, it was very comparable to last year's U.S. Open pattern, and um, they pretty much broke down the same way they did. You know, most, most of the girls started left, and then we had to chase it left. Uh, yeah, the, the, first three, the first three patterns were, were fun. They were hard, but they were fun. You know, you come out here and you, you want to bowl the best you can, but even when you bowl bad, you're definitely learning a lot. Joined by Katie Sutfin here in the booth. And Williams Jr. here with you. We're watching 
Again, Bree McPherson, Summer Jasmine, and Sydney Brummett. Last time we saw McPherson, she shot 260 plus. I was on uh, 25 and 26. Speaking of 25 and 26, Daniel McEwen there wraps a 10 pin. Shot there for Sid. We always talk about the amount of talent, of course, and it, it goes without saying. This is a very talented league organization of professional athletes here. Um, but the the range, because the PWA is unique in the sense because there was a break, obviously. Mm -hmm. There is a range of veterans to uh, certainly young rookies and those who are uh, in their early 20s, for example, as Tish Johnson was bowling, won this event in 1992. Uh, and to someone who, like Sid, Sidney Brummett, for example, who will be a senior in college here in a few weeks, how cool is it to be able to kind of share uh, and learn from kind of both generations if you will obviously those who have been here and done it for a very long time and then those who are kind of still learning and you maybe get to help them and then other folks help you and you all kind of share this information it's been great um like i said earlier uh when we came out of college there was nothing to bowl and to be able to see you know these girls the younger ones especially they go they will like collegiate events and then they get the opportunity over the summer to come out here and and, and bowl and expand on their knowledge and I mean their craft it's it's great when I first came out on tour three years ago it was a little bit of a starstruck feeling uh, you know you watch you watch Liz you watch Kelly um, on TV growing up and you're like I, I want to throw it like them I want to be like them and then all of a sudden you're in a tournament and they're bowling on the next pair or they're, they're bowling with you and it's it's definitely a different vantage point. It's wonderful to be able to watch it up close. And it honestly it was amazing. Like the first time uh the first time I bowled against Kelly in match play, it took me a good three frames to settle in. I could uh, see that. I was a little nervous. I mean um, with anyone. I you know, I could if it was me I'd probably do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the first time I bowled with Tish I was uh I mean Tish is great. She's very intimidating. So the first time I bowled with her, I was like, "Oh, oh man, this is a whole different, <laughs> whole different ball game." But I think it's great. Uh, like Sydney and all these other girls, they can come out and they can get their feet wet. They don't have to commit to the whole season, but they can bowl as many events as possible. And and it just shows you there's a next step. The tour's growing. Um, you know, things are going in the right direction. There's gonna there's gonna be things to bowl in the future. Joined by Katie Sutphin, who had some collegiate success of her own at the University of Central Florida. Yep, good old Orlando. A couple of uh, UCF Knights that uh, I know both men and women. Obviously, Stephanie Johnson. Yes, I did not. I did not have the pleasure of bowling with Steph. I missed her by a year. But I grew up right down the street from UCF, so I got to see I got to see a lot of good good players go through the program. Had some really good teams during they, my my they collegiate did. days. Yeah, their men's team is <laughs> really good. The, and the women's team. Yeah. They both uh, that program at one point it was arguably the best in, in the country at, at one point. And yep. Let me tell you, do you know Mike Larson? <laughs> yes, I do know Mike <laughs> Larson. <laughs> if he's listening, uh, we always have this conversation about UCF. Uh, I went to Lindenwood, so there's a, you know, there's a. There's a little bit of rivalry, yeah. A little bit. Kind of bit. A little bit. We, but we had fun. Amanda Green, if you're listening. Correct. There we go. See, that, that, there we go. So, uh, so we always ended up conversating about 
back in the days and those kind of things. So, uh, but I would trade it in. I know you would not trade in your your time bowling collegiately as well. No, I I met some uh, some amazing people when I was in college, and you know I I room with uh, Amanda Green and Brandy Branca sometimes on the tour, and we joke around all the time. You know, Brandy, Amanda, and I we didn't bowl for. We didn't bowl for the same college. We bowled against each other, you know, year round for a couple of years, and now we're on tour together and we're really good friends. And that's that's how it is with most of these girls out here. You know, we bowled against each other, we've beaten each other on many levels, but we've made some really, really good relationships. Summer Jasmine in the eighth frame, three bagger, nine spare, three bagger, looking for four in a row. Yeah, Summer made a really good ball change um, going into this game. She struggled a little bit on um, the pair before, a little bit over under. Uh, you know, with most of the girls playing right on the pattern, uh, it's starting to beat up the fronts. So uh, her balls are reading a little bit too early, and then she balled down, and it went a little bit too long, and it was uh, a little wiggly on the back end. But this one seems to be working. I did notice, uh, and I didn't see her previous game, but she was on this pair, or excuse me, uh, 25 and 26 a couple games ago and throwing something a little different. But uh, as you described there, you can certainly see it. And Sydney Brummett there gets out of trouble just to 3 6 10. Yeah, I mean, even on that shot, you can see that the fronts are starting to go a little bit because that, that was pretty much on target from where she's been. I assume you're bowling B squad. Is that a safe assumption? No, I'm bowling C squad. Wow. Yeah, I wanted to come in. You're a you great know. friend. <laughs> I try to be. You, <laughs> you, young lady, are a fantastic friend. You know, I'm just returning the favor. Um, you know, it's been it's been a rough season for me, uh, like I said, and and summer's definitely been there. And when I did bowl well in Orlando, she made sure to stop by and carry a bag because I had all of them out of the paddock. <laughs> I needed all my options. Did you keep them in the uh, the bowlers area so that way oh, of no course. one got upset? With of course. Just in okay. the tiled area. That's right. Heed the announcements. I, oh, <laughs> I I listen to Daniel. I definitely follow the rules. Don't I <laughs> don't want her coming to talk to me. <laughs> but the great the great thing about uh, Boardwalk, where uh, the Players Championship is going to be next year, is that it's a a very big venue. Um, it's got a lot of a lot of space in the bowlers area and a lot of space on the concourse uh, for fans, which is great. Um, not many people know it's it was previously a Walmart. How about that? Yep. The uh, spacious indeed. Then. Yeah, the proprietor uh, bought it after Walmart sold to go to a bigger location. Renovated it into you know the great facility that it is today, and. Uh, even though it's in my backyard, I'm definitely looking, looking forward to going back for the Players' Championship next year. Kendra's doing a really good job. Lante would like to go back to some familiar areas as well next year at the Players, and uh, she has been striking and throwing great shots all day long, 222 for Galante. She is your current leader at plus 168 after four games, so we'll add to that total. We'll see if she will remain in the lead. Pearson open in the ninth frame. Here is Laura Plazas with her final offering. Seven on the fill. She will shoot 187. But she'll give a few pins back. She's the seventh after four games as Summer Jasmine takes care of business on the 10 pin. And she is set up nicely for a good finish here in the 10th. Some are currently at minus five, tied for 21st in this squad. Again, important to note, this is A squad. A squad kicking off bowling today. So B squad is next, approximately 215 Eastern. And C squad will hit the lanes at approximately 7... 630. 730 Eastern. Oh, sure. 630 Central, local time here in Dallas, or excuse me, Plano, Texas, uh, Northern suburb of Dallas, the DFW, the Metroplex area. You see Danielle McEwen in the 10th frame. So she's now into the 220s. 
So, wow, so you're not bowling B squad. So you're looking ahead at this point to, to, to as we mentioned, up, up to the double burn and what uh, potential moves or adjustments you'll need to make where you'll be playing on the lanes. Uh, is it hard to tell? Obviously, from right now, I mean, we've got, you know, three more games, this squad and a full eight coming up next. Yeah, right now I'm just hoping, you know, everybody stays as far right as they can. That's that's <laughs> definitely going to help C squad. Um, I'll I'll be back probably to watch the last uh, two or three games of B squad, see where everybody's playing, and you know, kind of hope and pray that it's not over the fourth arrow. So as far as my adjustments, I'm I'm really just going to have to wait and see. I have a pretty good idea. Of uh, of the arsenal, where in the arsenal I'll be. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, Jackal Ghost Phase Two for fresh. Um, if I can be in my tag cannon to start the squad, that's a really good sign. Um, I'm I'm betting against it though. Probably looking more like you know, uh, No Rules Pearl or a Daredevil. And like I said, if if we are right of the fourth arrow, I will be happy. Well, well, we'll have to wait and see, obviously, but uh, I just enjoy like, and love the fact yeah. that you're here right yeah. now, watching a good friend. That's a, that's a, that's important. It really it, is. It really is. We uh, like we we make a lot of friendships out here, and they're gonna last forever. Because whether or not we're bowling on tour, we're still gonna be bowling events. And uh, when you find a couple people that you can uh, spend time with and hang out with and you enjoy them, coming in early to watch them bowl is nothing. And, you know, everybody here is pretty much a big bowling nerd, so it's what we like to do anyway. Very nice game for Summer. Katie mentioned the ball change. She shoots 257 in game number five. And that will move her into the plus column overall. And Sydney Brummett. We'll close things out here on 23 and 24 momentarily. Game five, again, coming to an end across the house. Again, congrats to Jen Higgins. You can catch her 300 game highlights on our PWA Facebook page. Uh, Jen shooting the first 300 of the tournament. Ashley Galante had the first opportunity to do it. She had the front nine in game one, ultimately finishing with 276. Yeah, she she bowled really really well the first game. She left a uh, a light ten pin. I have to imagine that the confidence levels when you can get out to that kind of start. Oh, uh, definitely. It it loosens up your swing and it it allows you to just throw it. And then once you're throwing it well, all the moves and the ball changes seem to come a little bit easier. Shot there for Brummett's big double. Heard a lot of uh, a few different companies represented when you were talking about uh, your arsenal. Um, is that kind of just by design or the way you are are feeling right now in your game? Yeah, hey, I want to have a few options, if you will. Yeah, uh, in my game uh, going into the summer, I just wanted to have a couple more options. Um, like I hadn't thrown, I hadn't thrown much motive before, and I hadn't thrown storm in a while. Um, pretty much have one of everything in my arsenal, and uh, I just wanted to give it a try and see what works. You know, all the companies put out great equipment. Um, they just all have different shapes, and everybody bowls differently. So I see, uh, you know, Summer and I talk about it all the time. She's like, this ball works great for me. <laughs> Nobody else likes it. And I'm like, yeah, it, it happens across all brands. Yep. It's just based on the individual. Like, uh... I threw Brunswick in college. Uh, nobody seemed to like the Maxim. I love the Maxim. <laughs> Everybody thought it was uh, just too smooth. But for me, it worked great. Um, when, when I was on staff with Hammer, uh, you know, everybody... Everybody liked the Scandal Pearl, and for me, it was just... It was a little too clean. Um... It just is what it is. I seem to like the, the odd stuff, so. Well, you're not an odd person. A little bit. Maybe. Just a little bit. Maybe a 
It's all right. <laughs> 214 for Sydney Brummett. Well, I want to thank KD. Uh, I got her to come in for a game. I think I think you liked it. I think I think you oh. thought it was a little better than, yeah, than what you thought. You know, initially. everybody who knows me knows that uh, speaking in front of large groups of people is not my thing. But luckily, we're just hanging out in bowling on. That's right. The good news is is that you are speaking to a large group, but I don't have to see any of them. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we at some point will turn the cameras on ourselves and I'll make sure that you are with me when I do that. Um, I have no doubt. And then we'll we'll get you out that comfort zone. So I'll let you go follow Summer. Keep up uh, the good luck and the, the uh, good information for her. Uh, I don't know if it's always good information. But I, I try to be as helpful as possible. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Neil. Enjoy your breakfast. That is Katie <laughs> Sutphin, folks. I'm, I am going to enjoy breakfast very briefly here. Game six coming up next. You're watching the 2017 U.S. Women's Open Live from Plano Super Bowl in Plano, Texas, Bowl TV on Extra Frame.
All right, folks, welcome back to Plano Super Bowl here in Plano, Texas, live on Extra Frame, the U.S. Women's Open 2017 edition. And Jen Higgins, who at this point, no stranger to having the front anything after shooting 300 in uh, game four. I have the front five and now a 2 8 10 to deal with. On this pair, she's joined by Megan Kelly. And Megan Simon. So Kelly now with five in a row. Jen Higgins to the 300 game. Shot 254. So after five games, she is your leader by two pins, dethroning Ashley Galante. For that honor at the moment, Galante in second at plus 190. Higgins at plus 192. Deandra Asbady. In third at plus 160, Megan Kelly is in fourth at plus 132. On 25 and 26, Omar Arnett, or excuse me, Anita Arnett. Omar, her husband, is to my right watching. Debbie Ayers and Andre Ramirez Perea. Anita is in fifth currently on the squad at plus 119 and looking for more. Chops the 10 out. Higgins going to get back on it here on the 7th or in the 7th frame. I beg your pardon. Push. Yeah, Jen Higgins is a, a player, former Team USA member. Has made a multiple Queens telecast. Has finished fourth both times. Finished uh, fourth last year at the nationwide PWBA Sonoma County Open. Certainly a player, when you say it's only a matter of time, she will win a title on the PWBA Tour. Husband Dan is here. Ayers, what have watched that ball peel back. She didn't like it. She thought it was a little right. But she had a shot like that on 23 and 24 a few games ago. I thought she uh, was able to See how much area she had. So she, there's definitely some miss room for Debbie. Ashley Galante continues to bowl well. At the front five, nine spare strike. Here in game number six, she is on lanes 29 and 30. Had some questions about live scoring. There is no live scoring at the moment. They're trying to work out to see if... Uh, could make that happen. So if we do get some traction in that area, I'll let you know.
All right, Kelly, after going 6-1 in the first, has the last six. Eighth frame shot. That's got a push. I want to hook to tap it early. Katie Sutfin, I want to thank her for joining me during game five. She talked about how the lanes were starting to transition, specifically in the fronts. Fronts were starting to go a little bit high flush there for our net. That prompted a ball change, uh, for example, for Summer Jasmine, went to something that was a little bit cleaner through the fronts, and uh, she went on to shoot 257. So that's something to kind of watch out for. And as we move along, obviously, throughout the day, will the fronts get even worse? How bad will it get? Will it force players extremely left? Well, all those questions and more we'll find out soon enough. Megan has herself a PWBA regional title. Daughter of Linda and Bob Kelly. something here. She's got three in a row. Go through the rest of our standings here in a second. Higgins ask it to lay off. Asked the ball to lay off, and it did. So now Higgins looking for what could be 11 out of 12, which would make her last three games. Three hundred two fifty four. Sixty-five. Arnett, meanwhile, continuing. Right, Anji now with four in a row. Trouble for Kelly. Three, six, seven. Open frame in the ninth. Sydney Brummett. She's got three in a row. Reed McPherson back on it as well. Fair to our right, Summer Jasmine continuing the run she was on here on our feature pair in one game ago. Debbie Ayers with a strike in the ninth. Bolton had the front seven. She's going to shoot 268 with a spare here in the 10th. And a 7-10 for Higgins in the 10th frame. Samantha Kelly, I believe, has gone spare 
seven bagger, and now a nine pin in the ninth for Arnett. Shot there from Ramirez. Higgins. Tough open. One in the sixth and one in the tenth. Both splits. She'll have to settle for 231. Double for Kelly in the 10th. Good count. She'll be in the 230s. Shannon watching. The advice when needed and necessary. Just briefly conferred here on our fill shot prior to it. Autumn is here, her daughter. She's not here yet. I haven't seen her, but she is in Plano. I saw her yesterday.
All right, folks, sorry about that. This is game seven. Do me a favor and click refresh if you haven't already on your your browser. Got a brief little hiccup. Hopefully all is well. All right, we are joined by Christina Zerbinski. Gloria Wood from Corpus Christi, Texas, and Kaylin Carl. Kaylin from Albany, New York. Zerbinski now from uh, North Tonawanda. Of course, the wife of husband John, PW or PBA star, excuse me. They're on 23 and 24, and we got a chance to see uh, the trio on 25 and 26 a few games ago. Need a flag from Missy Parkin. And Heaney Wegner. I say thanks for your continuing uh, viewership this morning. Let's take a look at our scoreboard here. Stat update brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. After six games, Ashley Galante has reclaimed the lead. Shot 259 in game six. She is at plus 249. Jen Higgins second at plus 223. Anita Arnett in third at plus 176. Megan Kelly is fourth at plus 164. Deandra Asbady is fifth at plus 156. Well, Galante has led at this point uh, five out of the six total games. After four games, she relinquished the lead in game five to Jen Higgins. Nice double there for Flack. So we are late in the block now. Good for us to take a look at Flack, Parkin, and Wegner for the reason being that we saw them earlier on 23 and 24 and get an idea to see if they've made any significant moves. Missy Parkin is in the same area, but definitely with a different bowling ball. All right, good spare there for Zerbinski. Seen of the Southpaw, former All-American, national champion, at Maryland Eastern Shore. Her journey started at Oswego East High School. Oswego, Illinois, suburb of Chicago, west suburb. Right next to Aurora. She make her first television appearance. It's gonna come at the nationwide PWA Rochester Open. We'll tape that show this Sunday. Spare there for Parkin. In fact, Zerbinski defeated Missy Parkin in group step ladder final to advance to television. A shot there from Gloria Wood. In fifth place, 150, or excuse me, plus 156. In sixth, tied for six, Nicole Trudell and Elise Bolton at plus 120. Tied for eighth, Laura Plazas and Sydney Brummett at plus 113. Annie Wegner is 10th at plus 112. Again, long way to go. Of 
full squad, two full squads to go. And Caitlin Carl, the big four. players competing this week at the U.S. Women's Open. Three squads. All right, Carl will get the count. Black. Eighth frame as Gloria leaves a seven pin. Pretty good shot there. She wraps a ten pin. Here's Zerbinski. Jacking the lanes from the left side. That's a good shot, and she leaves a wrap seven pin. That was a very good shot there. Nice. Very clean off the hand. Do anything to it at the bottom. You can really see the ball doing the work. One 300 game so far and belongs to Jen Higgins. Don't see too many strikes this game. Shot there from Kaylin Carl. Wonder is it you know, what we talked about? As Wegner through the nose, late in the block, transition really starting to show up here. How far left will players get today? That is the question. Good break for the good guys there, if you will. Threw it pretty good. And the seventh, and then crosses over there and able to carry. And a 4-7 there for Flack.
Kaminsky. That one is a left. See Parkin clean through nine. Nina Flack clean through nine. Wagner is set to step up in the ninth frame here. Kalen Carl. What I believe was a ball change. Nice spare there for Zerbinski. It's big in the tenth frame. Saving a few extra pins there. She's going to head to the bag. Taken down there for Andy Vegner. Go back to our scoring here. The results and standings. Big double there for Flack in the 10th. A nice sigh of relief. Big exhale there. 72 for Zerbinski. Reed McPherson, 11th at plus 96. McEwen is 12th at plus 90. Kaiser Wagner, plus 86 and 13th. Summer Jasmine was in the 14th at plus 75. Missy Parkin, 15th at plus 51. And Samantha Kelly, 16th at plus 40. Nina Flack in 17th at plus 36. Julia Vaughn in 18th at plus 13. Speaking of Julia Bond, only open in the fourth. She has eight out of nine and heading into the 10th frame. First one is good in the 10th. She's over on 20 and 21. Side there for Gloria. She'll bring it back and look for the spare. Spare there for Gloria Wood. She'll have uh, a field shot, of course, to deal with here. Parker, meanwhile, spare on the first shot in the 10th frame. As he makes it a little move right, maybe a different ball. And a 196, flat 210. Bond is doubled in the 10th. He's got seven in a row. Through the nose, 262. Or 
Julia Mont. 195 for Gloria Wood. Egner, yes. That's a big double for her in the 10th. Good count. Now she'll be in the 220s. Back nine or better. Yeah, Matt Canizaro, Aaron Smith will be on hand here this afternoon. They're here already. But uh, they'll be hopping on the air at some point this afternoon. Long days and a long week here. We've got uh, most of our team assembled. So you will hear their voices toward the afternoon evening rounds during this week's U.S. Women's Open. All right, that'll do it. Game eight is on the way. Here on an extra frame. Didn't take too long. We started at, uh, at 8 a.m. this morning, 8 a.m. Central. About noonish is when we will be done here. All right, 23 and 24, Ashlyn Herzberg, Cindy Sutherland, and Cameron Marcano. On 25 and 26, Kaiser Wegner, Selena Broderick, and Danielle Walker. Players making their way. Small break. Back in a moment. You're watching the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. It is live on Extra Frame.
All right, Danielle Walker. He's going strike, spare, double from an Alabama State collegiate player. It's Karen Marcano almost made the green church in frame two. Now we'll have to try to make the big four in frame three. Selena Broderick looking for a double in Kaiser Vechner. Set to step up looking for a three-bagger. Here's Broderick from Connecticut. And Selena now with eight spare, nine spare double. Scoring this last uh, couple games look to be slightly downward. We're waiting for our after seven game updates. And it is in. And Ashley Galante is your leader at plus 239. Jen Higgins, second at plus 198. Both of those individuals, I won't say struggling, but uh, in comparison to their previous six games, obviously scoring a little down there. DeAndre Asbady is third at plus 169. Anita Arnett is fourth at plus 155. Laura Plazas is fifth at plus 154. Megan Kelly, a great day here on the lanes, is in sixth at plus 144. Dre McPherson in seventh at plus 139. Tied for eighth, Nicole Trudell and Elise Bolton at plus 134 and in tenth. Amy Wegner at plus 112. Now 19 people above the plus threshold here on this squad. Thanks to all of our viewers. Thanks to everyone who has liked our Live Now post and shared it. Let people know what you're watching. Big thanks to those who have checked out the highlight of Jen Higgins shooting a 300 game this morning as well. Hello to Troy Strader Sr. Rooting on Tish Johnson. Miss my guy Peter. Peter Potter from Fresno. Sal. But of a Coley. Just rolls right off the tongue. But a Cavoli. Best last name in the business. Shout out to Jim Duckworth. Appreciate you uh, joining us when you can there, Jim. Last event, third major of the season. Last regular season event, Walker. That one is high flush. Trip some pins, might have to make a, a small move here. Tish Johnson, speaking of, as the front five looking for the front six. Two pairs away. And she leaves a three pin. Broderick after the open in the fifth, trying to get back on things, start a new string in the sixth frame. And she gets out of trouble. Again, with the final event here, that means for many players, in fact, there, there will only be 16 players who will 
compete in the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship. Back of a shot there from Kaiser. Those who have not won a title, and those who won't win one, of course, will be taping three additional shows this Sunday after our live TV finals of the U.S. Women's Open. When we know those winners, we will then know be the 16 players of course it certainly will play out slightly differently on television as Danielle Walker now with five in a row the shells still have to air so it'll actually lead you right into the tour championship Good storylines, so of course, Stephanie Johnson, for example, who had uh, her second child with husband Chris in March. Went on down to a place she is very familiar with, Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando. And it's Herzberg through the nose. Made the TV show, did Steph. The place she used to compete at, practice at, work at. And she will have the opportunity to win that title at a place that she currently works at, practices at, competes at, etc. in Plano Super Bowl. How about that. Nice break for Marcano. Much needed after the Greek church and the big four. Wagner's got a request to push four, seven, nine. Bill Williams Jr. here with you. Thanks to our PWBA staff and uh, USBC staff here. To Neil Milligan, PWBA Director of Operations, Kathy Waka, Assistant Tournament Director, Kathy Kavicki, Tour Coordinator and On-Site Merchandise Manager. Jason Thomas, Brand Manager, but handles uh, social, excuse me, uh, digital media. During his day job, if you will. He's handling some digital media stuff right now, as a matter of fact. He will be here in the afternoon. Greg Moore is here, the director of tournaments. Greg does a great job of getting TV sets set up and built. Already kind of roped off and separated the TV area of the center. So again, if you are in the area or will be in the area and you want to come hang out during the weekend, I encourage you to do so. Please check PWBA.com for ticket prices or you can give Plano Super Bowl a call. Johnson, the defending champion, the Bowles in B squad. She 
She has a lead of the commanding variety in the points race. Uh, actually, nearly 33,000 points separates first and second, and that is Liz Johnson and Diana Zabialova. Kelly Kulik third on the points list. Danielle McEwen fourth on the points list. Rocio Restrepo is fifth. Walker. And nothing doing on the seven pin. He's had a good game going here. Just got to finish it out at this point. Marcano with five in a row. Out to the ninth frame looking for six consecutive. Michelin Herzberg, again, the former Shocker, Wichita State. Teammate Sidney Brummett competing this week as well. Asbady with a max score of 259 here in this final game. To potentially sneak into the lead. After one squad. Talk about the points. McEwen made three consecutive TV shows. Orlando, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, and Rochester. If she were to make a show, or make the show here at the U.S. Women's Open, there's a lot of things that has to go right, first and foremost. So, But it would be an incredible task. See, Marcano did... Uh, Struck in a nine to get to six in a row. She'd have to win all of the events. The three previous. Probably a very good showing here. She makes the show again at the U.S. Women's Open. And would need some help from Liz Johnson in the, in the sense of uh, she certainly you know, wouldn't benefit from a Liz win in, in regards to who could get to player of the year. Right now it's Liz Johnson. And she's got the commanding lead. But because of Danielle McEwen's recent success, there is a small chance. Good effort there from Selena. Very small chance that McEwen could not only challenge, but in what was thought was to be a rare case just a few weeks ago, the way the season was going. Someone other than Liz Johnson, again, potentially, it's very small, but it could happen. Win the player of the year. But I'm talking about, I mean, literally almost every domino would have to fall, right? And it actually starts here with the U.S. Women's Open. Danielle Walker, 10th frame. Three, six, ten. Got that one out. To the right early. We've seen some traction out near the gutter. Egner to get to 201. Nice opening block there for 
Wagner after eight games. Look and see what uh, Ashley Galante has. I think Ashley is only going to potentially shoot 182. Say if she doesn't have the lead, and it's very possible that she may not after this game, would have led six of the eight of today's eight games here in the A squad. Roderick, ah, come on, two pin. 222 for Walker, open in the 10th. Rummick continuing to strike. See, Asbady opened in the 9th. She may be out of the running in regards to The lead after our opening round one coverage here in A squad. Cindy Sutherland gonna bounce back from the open in the ninth frame. Off camera, Marcano. Well, heck of a job there from Karen Marcano. 245 after starting with strike, then goes Greek Church, big four, sheet. 245. Cindy Sutherland. That was a little right. You see there's a little bit of an OB there if you get it right early still. So Spirit will give her 216, 190 for Ashlyn Herzberg. All right, 215 for Sutherland. And folks, that's going to do it for our A squad coverage. A few pairs in the 10th frame, back 27 and 28. That's one ball left. One ball left on 29 and 30. And uh, actually, the way things are set up here at the bowl, if we were to pan our camera to the left, we actually wouldn't be able to get you any coverage. And so, that is where we will end things here again. A squad. Game eight of eight complete. Be sure to check pwba.com. For results and standings or bowl.com slash US Women's Open. Either one will get you to the results. We have about, I would say, oh, 10 minutes prior before the squad will be officially complete. So I check back within the next 15 to 20 minutes for the updated scores to see who's leading. Be sure to check the archives, of course, here on Extra Frame. If you'd like to go back and watch uh, this round from the beginning, you can see the fresh and how the A squad attacked it in their first few games. 
So we'll see you in uh, about an hour or so. B Squad will hit the lanes 2.15 Eastern Time, 1.15 Central here in Plano, Texas. So for our entire crew and staff, both PWBA and USBC, the staff here at Plano Super Bowl, and for Katie Sutphin, who joined us during Game 5, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. We will see you in one hour. B Squad hits the lanes this afternoon. You are watching the 2017 U.S. Women's Open. You're watching it live. This is Bold TV on Extra Frame.